So today we're going to be looking at the sticking brake caliper on the Honda FN2. As you can see, I've already got the wheel off, the car's jacked up, and to make life easier, I've angled the wheels that points away from the car. Um, so over there is my filthy wheel, which is going to need a lot of cleaning with all the brake dust that's built up all over it. So what we're going to do is when we're taking the caliper off, we're going to be putting this seal replacement kit on the car because um, what I should suspect happen is the seal's gone and we're going to be uh, replacing the piston as well. The kit can be brought off eBay for about £20. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. So we've got the car jacked up, it's all nice, safe and secure under there. We're going to start by giving it a real good scrub down with a wire brush because looking at this, this hasn't been taken off for quite some time. Uh, we're going to start by removing this bolt up here and this one here, which will free the actual caliper itself from the hanging plate. Um, and whilst we're at it, I'm uh, going to spray some uh, WD-40 or quick release in there, uh, because before I do anything else, I want to make sure I can actually uh, crack the bleed nipple, because whenever you're doing anything on the brakes, you're always going to want to re-bleed the system afterwards. So a really important point, if that bleed nipple isn't going to move, there's no point going any further forward at this stage. So as you can see, we've given that a really good clean. So now what I'm going to, I'm going to give it a good spray with some uh, fast acting degreaser, just to clean off all the dust there. Uh, after that, we're going to give it a spray and let it soak in with some uh, fast release penetrating. Uh, from WD-40, quite a good reliable brand. So what we're going to do is go hit that up now. So yeah, that should give everything just a nice bit of a clean, get rid of all the dust that I've just kicked up, giving it all a scrub. It all looks pretty manky in there, so I highly doubt this has been off any time soon. So we'll let that dry. So now that's all clean, we're going to spray it up with some penetrating uh, penetrating fluid. Uh, I've covered the disc up because the last thing you want to be doing when you're spraying this is getting it all over the pads and the discs. Um, otherwise you're going to have all manner of problems when it comes to braking once, once this is done. So we'll spray some of this on. let that work just for a couple of minutes. Now hopefully that will have all done its job. What we're going to do is go ahead, uh, see if we can get that bleed nipple to shift. It's looking quite promising. The thread's looking quite clean down in there. Uh, the bleed nipple, just for ease, is a it's a 10 mil socket. So I'm going to put a very little pressure on there, but just easier than using a spanner because I don't know when the last time, uh, time this was released was. Uh, got oil catch pan down there. Uh, just to catch any fluid that is likely to, to come out of the system. So with the socket, I was able to release the bleed nipple with very little force at all. What we're going to do is just pop a flare spanner on there, which you can see it gets a much better purchase on the nut. And being that this is quite well corroded, it, it just eliminates the chance of rounding any of that off. So as you can see, that's quite happily moving just there, which means we are all good to proceed with with going ahead with refurbishing this caliper. We'll see if that, if that doesn't move, then you've, you're gonna have to look at sort of breaking the nipple off, uh, drilling it out and replacing that, and it's probably best to take it to the garage to be done. But as, as we've managed to free that up, we can go ahead and remove these two to start with. They are 12 mil, 12 mil socket attachments. So that will just free the caliper up from the hanger. And then once that is freed, uh, you can go ahead and undo this one, which is a 14 mil uh, on, on the FN2. This one's a 14 mil, and that will release the actual brake line. Now, when you release that, there's going to be a lot of fluid in the caliper, and there's also going to be fluid coming out of the line, so it's always good to have a catch pan underneath. But to eliminate fluid loss as much as possible, uh, you just want to basically tie that up, just so it's, it's pointing up vertically, and then you'll just keep as much fluid as possible uh, inside inside the brake line. There. So now the caliper has been released, what we're going to do is go ahead and undo this banjo bolt which is going to release the brake line. Uh, the moment we, before we do that, 
what I'm going to do is clamp the brake line itself to reduce the as much fluid loss as possible. Now I don't actually have any um, line clamps as such, but what I have seen other other tutorial videos doing, and I'm going to do the same, is pop a bit of cardboard around the brake line to protect it, and then use a set of mole grips to pinch down on that, and that will stop as much fluid loss as possible. And to stop any last sort of trickles out the end, I'm going to wrap uh, a bag around that and tape it up and uh, and just fold it out the way and then we'll be able to remove the caliper from the disc and start taking that apart. So now we have the caliper completely removed the banjo bolt has been sealed up there are two washers on there one just there one just there very important not to lose these and we have our brake line clamped as described so no excess fluid is going to be falling out of that. Now down here we have the caliper and there is the culprit, the piston's not fully retracted which is why my caliper is sticking. Um, it is covered in a bit of brake fluid at the moment uh, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a scrub off. Now brake fluid's very very corrosive so keep this away from all your body work because uh, it will strip the paint. I've not got around to painting the calipers yet so I'm not too concerned, it's absolutely covered at the moment. Like I said we're going to give that a thorough clean. Uh, before we remove the piston and, uh, and put the rebuild kit on it. So now we've given it a bit of a clean up, uh, it's time to remove the old piston. Now there's a number of different methods I've seen to do this. Some people get a, uh, a car valve and, the, and they cut it down and fix it in there and use air pressure to remove it. Personally I'm not going to fiddle with that um, what I'm going to try first and foremost is the brute force method, which again I've seen a few people do. And you want to get yourself a punch, or in my case I've got an old screwdriver that fits down in where the banjo bolt goes. There is enough space there that it's not going to damage any of the threads. And really I'm just going to hit down on that with a hammer and hopefully the old piston will gradually start to drop down. So now the piston is out, we can focus on cleaning up the caliper, replacing the, the manky old rubber seal in there. There's another one just inside. Don't know how well you can see that, but just in there, there's another one that needs to be fished out. It's a, it's a square profile uh, washer in there. Uh, it's in really quite bad condition, so that'll need a thorough good clean. It was very corroded and it wasn't just a simple case of the seal had gone. Um, it had actually well and truly seized. Um, tried rigging up an air valve in there to use air pressure to get rid of it. That didn't work either. Uh, in the end, had to get the, the gas torch out and heat the actual caliper, turn it over, cool the, the actual piston inside down and then uh, hit it from the outside um, until the, um, the piston came out. And that we'd, I had to do that Quite a few times to work the piston out of there so without doubt if i'd have taken that to a garage they would have probably tried to sell me a whole new caliper so i'm quite glad i've actually persevered and done it but that is quite badly you see that's taken quite a lot of effort to scratch some of that out and it feels really quite rough and horrible so next step a good clean down and on with the rebuild so i've started off by giving this a really good clean as you can see it all in there it's much cleaner than it was. Now I'm using a flathead screwdriver and what you want to do is really spend quite a bit of time just scraping around all that old corroded rubbish out and now the, the second uh, wash is gone that sits just in there you want to make sure that is all nice and clean too just in there all around here and you want to spend a bit of time doing this because the cleaner you can make this the, the better your new seals are going to sit and, and the better quality job you're going to do. If, if you rush this and, and leave this all pitted and uneven, then you, you're only going to be looking at another seized caliper at some point in the near future because it's not going to sit properly and you're going to get all, all leaks and everything. But this was really quite bad condition compared to some of the, the repair videos I've seen done on here. So I'm hoping this will be of use to a few people that have had a similar sort of issue to me where the the caliper is just completely seized up. So I'm going to carry on and, and make a real good job of this and, uh, and resume when it comes to actually rebuilding. 
Okay, so here we are at the rebuild stage. We've got our assembly kit out. Now, the only parts we're interested in at the moment with regards to putting the piston, the inner seal in, and the seal, the outer seal, is these two bits here and this hydraulic assembly packet. Now on the back, it says compatible with dot three, four and five brake fluid. Be, make sure you use this one when reassembling the actual caliper. These two bits are for the bolts that uh, fix the caliper to the, the hanging plate on the car, so we're not interested in these at the moment. So let's put those out of the way there. And this one here is just a new cap for the bleed nipple. So again, we'll pop that out of the way over there. Now this packet here, the silicon brake grease, this is for all the other moving parts. So when we reassemble the caliper and fix it back to the actual hanging plate, this is the one we're going to want to use then. Not to use this one on actually rebuilding the caliper itself, it's not to be mixed with any form of brake fluid. So we'll just leave that one out of the way over there. So when we come to put this on, we want to make sure we put a nice film on both of these new seals around the outer edges of the piston here and inside the caliper we want to put a nice thick layer all the way around the inside so just to make reassembly um, as nice and lubricated and easy as possible so we're going to go ahead rebuild that and next step we'll be fitting this back on the car so i know i said the next step will be building back on the car but i thought i'd actually just show where where all the grease and everything's meant to go as you can see just in here this is where our new square profile washer has been fitted we've got a lovely layer of grease all over that and inside the actual caliper itself we've got our new our new seal on the piston seated where it's meant to sit just in there uh, our piston is nicely covered in grease as well the the specific one for inside the caliper and now the last step is let's make sure that's nice and clean no contaminants were picked up on that that's fine it's going to actually be quite tricky to show that sliding just in the caliper there stand that upright there we are get a good grip on it and that should work its way in but i'm gonna to have to use two hands just to get a nice nice good seal on that we reinsert that and then the next step will be refitting and bleeding it once it's back on the car here we are back with the caliper it's still not on the car because there has been many many troubles trying to get this seal seated both at the top around the piston and at the bottom on the on the lip of the caliper now there's a few videos out there that simply say lubricate this piston well lubricate this rubber seal well and it's just simply a case of line it up and push it down now after doing this a couple of times um it just didn't seem it just didn't seem right i pushed, pushed it back out from the bottom to double check uh, and my suspicions were confirmed it's just not it doesn't have the force needed to take it over this step and seat it on this lip it looks good but the moment you go to bleed the brakes, brake fluid would just come out everywhere. So I was, I spent a good hour trawling around for uh, other ways to seat these. Now, there's someone else that uses the airline. You seat the seal on the caliper first. You wedge the piston in, pump the air in from the bottom, and the seal puffs up like a balloon around it. The way I found most useful actually came off a BMW rebuild post. So completely unrelated to the Honda, but it works in theory. Now you use the old brake fluid. So in the Honda's case, it'd be some old dot four. It forms very lubricating. And what you do is you put it around the seal and very lightly around the top of the caliper where it sits in. So, uh, so what happens, you then put it on the piston up here, but then roll it all the way down. So the other end of the seal overhangs the piston so you get a bit of sort of sag in the bottom and you gently feed the piston down all the time you can manipulate this rubber boot around the lip in there and it's quite time consuming but now once it's in it's actually relatively difficult to depress that piston because it's formed an airlock so what we need to do is release the bleed nipple from the bottom chock it up 
and use probably a wedge and a C-clamp just to push that back down. But at the moment, that is nice and solid. It's sealed at the top, sealed at the bottom. But don't be fooled, this is by no means a 10 minute job like a lot of the videos out there try and sell you. So here we are back on the workbench again. Now, as you can see, I've clamped it up, wound the piston down, and it's nice flush finish. What was happening with um, all the other methods I tried, this rubber seal was actually as raised up as, as the top of the piston. It just wasn't sat properly. But since trying this other method of using some old brake fluid as oil, um, because that's what's gonna be, you know, down in this casing anyway is brake fluid. Um, seat it just on the bottom of the piston so it sags round and just gently feed it down and work it down into the lower into the lower seat as you go. So now after the third time of saying it we can go back to the car to fit it. So we're now at the stage of rebuilding the caliper back onto the car. I've decided I'm going to pull these sort of spring pins out that go there that hold the caliper in. As you can see, the grease has run pretty much dry on them. These just belong in here. So you just pull them out. The rubber boot comes off them quite easily. I was going to replace those, but actually they don't really look like they need replacing. They're in pretty good condition. So this is where our second packet of grease comes in. You just open it up, smear it on those pins, and pop them back inside, and that to give them a nice little refresh. So here we are back at the car again. The bleed nipples back on. The brake line's done up, the caliper is all fastened up. All these were nipped up to start with and now they've just done up. Um, they're, they're done up tight, but you don't want to over tighten them. Um, because obviously all this gets hot, it expands, and you just don't want anything to become overly too tight. Um, it could damage the threads, but it'll also make your life a lot harder if they're massively over tightened next time you come to do any sort of job like this. So now it's a case of bleed the system. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bleed this automatically today. I'm not gonna make a video of it because I'm running short on time now. Um, I intend to do the other side, but to help me with it, I've bought this kit down here. It's the Easy Bleed Kit by Gunson. It's about a 25 pound thing from Halfords. Basically, it enables you to bleed the brakes by using a vacuum, so it become a one man job rather than two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try that out today and when I do the uh, brake caliper seal on the other side, not that it needs doing, but because I've done one side because it was all, all seized up, I thought I might as well do the other whilst I'm here. Um, I will do a proper review on how that bleed kit works in due course. <laughs> 